Welcome back to Book of Dawn, IOP Academy, episode 102. Our heroes are celebrating Athelor's successful return from beyond death in the holy city of Brontha. And while there's a great deal of feasting and religiosity and writing things down so they can put it, you know, in, in the rest of the catechism and such, our heroes do have other tasks to tend to. Tasks that with Athelor's return are seemingly no longer imperiled. Is there anything you want, role play or storytelling wise, from the rest of the day? Athel wants to watch over them as they get a nap. Turn the favor. <laughs> <laughs> God, it may have been up so long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Macho's trying to be like, oh, no, I'm good. Like, are you good, Athelor? But it'd be able to tell, yeah, we're fucking exhausted after at times. Garnet and, and Mantra sitting at the big fancy dinner with all the big wigs being like, oh, yes, this great and holy moment. They're just. Mm -hmm. uh. I think she wants to talk to Priest Wallagash about mm -hmm. the uh, Amosis appearances. Mm -hmm. if, he, if he's available or someone adjacent. like No, that. he'll totally make himself available. He's. Got a lot of energy for the high priest. And what particularly about it? He's very eager to hear everything that you have to say about all these, you know, beatific apparitions. These, these are things to which we can aspire but not desire. For to do so would be untoward. Um, I just, I, I've seen my, my dad of few times now and i'm just wondering if this the sun rider presents himself in different forms like is is that the sun rider is that my dad i don't i i, I can't seem to make sense of it oh well this is hmm. theologically speaking it's, it's a little bit unprecedented i don't yet know the answer, but I think it is safe for us to say that despite the circumstances of your father's death, he had more work to do and a, a higher purpose to fulfill, and he still seeks to fulfill that purpose. I don't think that it's the Sunrider disguising himself as a Moses. That would be philosophically troubling and emotionally traumatizing and entirely out of, of the nature of, of the one whose light shines truth upon the world. It'd be deceptive, which is not at all uh, completely outside of the, the idiom um, of, of, of the Phoenix Lord. So I think, Garnet, the truth might lie somewhere in between. Could I... Um be crazy because no one else saw him oh no no that's not uncommon at all that's not uncommon at all you have a part to play Kalor the first prophet beheld things and wonders that were not visible to the rest of the people when he established our holy city there's lots of precedent for this sort of manifestation you share a deep connection both with Amosis and with Zalar, so you would interpret things that perhaps would be hidden from the sight of others, or or simply too luminescent for us to behold. So I'm not crazy? No, of course not. Then how can you tell the difference between something that you see something that's not there that is intended and not intended, as in you've made it up in your head, like... I believe that there's a pattern um, in this case, uh, and while there's more introspection to do, and one should always be alert and aware of, of false manifestations, of infernal forces disguising themselves to lead us astray. But I think that given that these events were accompanied, they, they, they paired with such, such divine intervention in such a, a, an outward sign of, of of grace and power, I think that that connection proves that this is not simply a work of the fevered mind. Uh, it, one should always ask oneself what these voices and faces and, and visions seek or say. 
the voices of that emerge from within often speak of nonsense or uh, self-destruction when the mind is unhealthy or fear. They are rarely comforting. Okay. Thank you. And great party and sips her tea and <laughs> waddles away back yes. to the party. Praise Zalar. Have some more pomegranate juice. <laughs> she says, taking a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't pomegranate juice. When uh, when Athelor was about to experience, I suppose, waking up in Bromfer, did mm -hmm. it feel anything similar to the third miracle where Amosis also seemingly had a presence? From your perspective? It was, it was very different. You almost almost felt alone when you crossed back over. Mm. Not abandoned or neglected, but that was a crossing that you only you could make in that moment. And you had encouragement and help and love behind you, urging you to move forward, and you had people waiting for you on the other side, but in that moment where you were in neither place, it was just you. Okay. Well, so much for making Garnet feel like she isn't crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Athelor, what are you going to do about your dad? Are you going to reintroduce yourself or go... I Hidden? Uh, stay hidden? Uh, good point. Um, I guess I don't look as much like his son anymore. I... Well, my, my father, my maybe my entire family is in danger. They've been cast out on medical grounds and that Crimson Council thing is happening. I don't know what the best way forward is, but like I said before, I am committed to rescuing the sage. We need her, and more importantly, the rest of the world needs her too. As for my uncle, that's better left out of my hands. He holds no control over me that I can feel, but obviously my own opinion is tainted from him being helpful to me for most of my life, even if his betrayal is unforgivable. DM question. If you'll allow it, could I use an identify spell to tell if Athelor's blood is still like on on Anderud blood or like if it's the same blood or mm. like like just the origins of the blood to see if it's he's still related to his family kind right. of right just a small amount of your blood <laughs> an identify spell would not do that you would need to cook up some custom magic there's there's if you don't have it like identify identifies magical items and enchantments and for just somebody's blood or lineage because it doesn't do that you'd need to do some ridiculous alchemical stuff, probably. Which is not impossible. You could go to the Tower of Divination. Gotta see if I'm woe. If I start basically like, I forgot. Because <laughs> <laughs> before, like, if I were to cast on Identify on Athelor, like the last part of Identify, if you mm -hmm. touch a creature, you learn what spells are currently affecting it. Was I able mm -hmm. to detect the uncle connection no. through that? Because it was physiological, it wasn't a spell. It wasn't like a like an effect that somebody had. It was an actual like quantum level biological connection, not a spell or anything. Okay, disregard. Um, it, it was worth a shot. Oh, and then asking Athelor, I guess this time. Um, so why were you made to have this connection again? This was something your dad wanted you to have. Uh, Athelor gathers Garnet and Mantra in close as to not uh, sour the parties. When I was 
beyond, I saw what we summoned that night, that grotesque thing. It was following the trail of Ericura's blood, but also a thread was burning away, and I think that my uncle may have designed this connection to use me as some kind of node or nexus to guide that creature here. I don't know what my father may have had to do with it, but I hope he was not complicit. The thread was burning away? What do you mean? I, I would assume that it connected to my old body, and when that was... Uh, they were chasing Red that. Burn. But we... sounds like this connection was physical, like in your body, and wouldn't that be since birth? Like you've always had this, right? So your father yeah. has to be involved? I... I would have to ask him. But it seems likely. Then you'd be safer not to go back, right? Not till I'm ready. Well, after we've rescued the sage, that is still the priority. But then perhaps it would be best for me to be scarce from Andarud, besides with what's happening right now with the Cothramoy Moor and the council. I would certainly be a complication to the plans of whoever's trying to take over. Well, we're trying to be undercover when we're there anyway, we're rescuing the sage, so. As long as that goes well, shouldn't be anything to worry about. Well, speaking of how that's going to go, what about your magic? What do you, how do you feel about that? That's a fantastic question. I thought it would be rude to, um, I attempt to press the digitate out a candle. The candle snuffs out. Okay. You got it. You got something. Got cantrips, that's somewhere to start. A lot of my power did seemingly flow from my uncle before. I will need to draw it from somewhere else, I suppose. I'm sure I'll find a, a means of doing so. I don't know how powerful... Uh, a matrix I could power right now, but it seems like I at least have cantrips and I have my brain as well, which is the most important thing for rescuing the sage. I can still navigate Vajaya. Glad you got that back. <laughs> it's been a while. Well, I'm good for the rest of the night then. Good for the rest of the night. Do you want to spend the night in Brantha or do you want to go back to the academy? Probably late, right? It's probably like what one a.m. or some it, shit. Like, I mean, oh this started. You were reborn at dawn. Uh, oh. you, yeah, you went to a, like a feast, a party. The festivities will go on until sunset, probably. Um, at least this is again. There's just a ton of of people. All all the different flame father, fathers and fire keepers and acolytes are just like talking about the theological implications of everything that happened and comparing notes. So there's a lot to talk about, but not necessarily a lot that is going to directly impact or make for good TV. So mm -hmm. you can choose to leave El now while duly impressed with everything that's happened. Um, does want to get <laughs> it's sort of like, great, that worked. Let's go get the sage. <laughs> awesome. Uh, just a bit of flavor for me, names. Mm -hmm. uh, what does it feel like to be sleepy for the first time? That's kind of why I was asking where you were going to head. <laughs> You're full of energy, so it doesn't kick in until late. So once we know... Uh... If you're going home tonight, which is what Elna wants to do, or if you're staying, which is what you're all encouraged and welcome to do by the Bronthen Council at all, um, that'll determine that. I suppose it's down to if, like, Wallagash needs to make any, like, last observations. 
like for the 24 hour period it doesn't he doesn't foresee any side effects or anything like that i mean you walk you live you breathe you stand before us it's his is less a scientific interest in like the way your body works and stuff and more what was your spiritual experience and and what can we learn about the cosmos and about the gods from this so we were fate waves exactly exactly <laughs> and so where do the th while. two for ioth garnet uh she might want to stay the night maybe she can join in the morning or whatever <laughs> If it's a big deal, unless El now is very like, let's go, and then she could be convinced, but is, is liking the positive vibes of the mm -hmm. party and thinks it would cheer her up to be here. Yeah. So. Athol will stay with her. He feels very dutiful after they stayed up all night with a, mm -hmm. <laughs> with a bowl of ashes. <laughs> well,. Elnau's main concern is getting into action on rescuing the sage, and she needs all of you to do that. So if you're staying, she's like, fine, we can plan and talk about it here. All right. Mantra oh. defaults whatever Garnet is like if she mm. wants to stay and Athor is staying, then yeah, we'll also stay. Mommy's come to pick Garnet up from a party. She's honking the horn ass. <laughs> <laughs> Get in! We're going shopping. All right, then you have the, the the gardens of the palace to yourselves for the evening. I mean, not entirely to yourselves. There's so much hus hustle and bustle, but you can get a private room. Garnet's room is prepared and made ready for you like it was last time, except without the Muir Cologne housekeeper. Uh, and yes, they verified and double verified. So under those circumstances, Athalor, the weariness is very similar but before it was like i need to to refocus and to clarify myself and now it's more like a warm fuzzy blanket getting drawn over you it's this much more almost like seductive or slow physical experience of getting sleepy oh i feel weird turn on oh i think i need to lie down Okay, go to um, sleep. My yeah. brain, my brain feels slow. Been a been a long day. What do you elves do? Like dream or whatever? Go do that. We trance. Yes. Uh, been going to do that. Floor oh, goes over to okay. whatever corner of the room has like the food on or whatever, and okay, does the cross-legged sit and. Attempts to trance. Uh, nothing happens. The pathways of memory just... It's not like something got cut off. It's just not there. I'll try again, but harder. Roll a constitution saving throw, please. <laughs> Take psychic damage. With advantage. Oh. Wait, that's just a constitution check. Uh, add three to that. All right. 21. Cool. 21. Mm, no, no, still not happening. After all, in frustration, kind of just like flops down on the pillows and closes his eyes. <laughs> okay. Not trying to sleep, but it might incidentally happen. It happens. It eventually happens. Now that you're not deliberately, I would inadvertently fighting it off. Um, dreaming, as it turns out, is fortunately for you not an entirely unfamiliar experience. But I do want you to roll a wisdom check, please. Ooh, a wisdom check. Okay. Seven. A seven. It takes uh. I don't think you realize that that's what's happening. And it's very much like uh, hallucinating. You and I know what dreams are like. Athelor has been there, but doesn't have that sort of, because it's something that's always been artificially induced. He's always gone into it knowing, okay, I'm entering this other plane of existence where mental laws take over effect. Here, it's just that sort of like, mm, things are happening and they're weird. We will address that 
shortly. Mason, Mantra, anything else that you're doing this evening? Nah, tired of shit. I'm just gonna sleep. Okay. Garnet, are you spending time with anybody else? Nope. Okay. Your mother doesn't, like, push to talk to you, but she does sort of, like, make sure people are checking in on you, see if you need anything, because she knows that you are upsetty spaghetti. L now is going to trance, and is, but is, like, already just working on the plan to, to rescue the sage in her head. That's what she's already focused on. Okay. Athelor. Mm -hmm. Your dreams are vivid and strange and funhouse versions of a lot of the things that you thought about while you were neither here nor there. Um, the geography of the Academy does not make sense. It connects to places that it shouldn't. And yet those places are, um, it makes total sense to you in the moment. Before I go with anything, is there anything that you want to throw in? No, no, just go wild. Okay. <laughs> what is dreaming? All right. You are tiny and in the grove. And everything is just huge and towering above you. Uh, and you find yourself running from squirrels enormous squirrels that aren't hostile but are curious and much larger than you and very likely to crush you uh just in their curiosity what is the correct solution for these squirrels uh hide inside so they can't get in okay roll 1d20 for me please Okay. You tuck yourself inside a white cap mushroom, just opening the door on it and going inside and shutting the door and sitting down in front of the fireplace. Curled up on a rug in front of the fireplace is a dragon who, compared to you, is the size of a squirrel. Okay. With uh, opalescent scales and. Tufts of emerald green fur runs down the chin, uh, chests, back, and tail. There's one horn arcing up, and the wings are glistening, almost translucent. And it's a slave? Mm-hmm. I suppose in dream logic, it's not too rude to wake them up. Like, hi, I'm Athelor. Oh! Oh, that's right, you're here now. Hi. Hello, Athelor. Nice to meet you. Your name? You can call me Wurinwa. Wurinwa? Exactly. Yes, you're good at that. I... Um... It's, it's squirrels. They can, they can be a nuisance, but that's fine. They're not going to hurt you. They're just a little bit curious. Let's just not, um, here, hold on. Just, uh, open the door. Opens the door to the white mushroom. The door of the mushroom opens into the moving mouthpiece of a suit of armor that is inside IOP Academy. Oh. Of course. Girls don't go in the academy. Exactly. Do you need a lift down? Uh, yeah. I don't know if I still know how to make Featherfall happen. Oh, let me. And Wurunwa, uh picks you up by the scruff of your robes Whee. and flies. And as you fly out of the mouthpiece of this set of armor... Uh, you grow until you're normal sized and it's no longer a, a huge drop down. Does Wurinwak stay the same size? Uh, compared to you, yes. It's still squirrel sized, but no longer micro okay. squirrel sized. So the, the ratio to you has been maintained. 
Thank you. Uh, perfect. Athelor, when you go to find the sage, I'm going to help you. Oh, that's great. Uh, oh, are you the dragon that Mantra and Garnet? Yes, yes, I already talked to both of them. It's nice to meet you. Yes, I wasn't expecting to meet you until we got there, but uh, here we are. That's much better. That's much faster. You... they... they said you were... a dream? No, I'm just... I spend some time here. But I'm real. Uh, yeah, ah, we are... my mantra. I'm just like, did, did mantra drug me? <laughs> <laughs> Right. I'm excited. It, it'll it be great. I mean, we're already a fantastic team. Yes. Good. And we are going to need to work together long, long, long after that. You seem nice. I'm happy to be friends. Good. Your skills with metaphysical planar geometry are going to be super, super, super helpful. Yes. We, we're going to need you to build things, but probably not for a while. Not until you've had some time to get your legs and figure things out. And um, But you have... Well, okay, your destiny can be whatever you want it to be, right? Um, but now that you're back, and now that um, she's here, and you're here, and she wants to help you, and she wants your help, um, I think that that's going to be really, really important. But we don't have to worry about that right now. We can just worry about getting the sage back. She? Yes. Rail Titan. Whose hands guide the pearl across the sky. She's who I had. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Does that make me like a... A warlock of Rialto or something? No, no, no. You are... You are a weaver of tones and threads. That's really who you are. And that's who you decided to be and to make yourself. So you're going to keep doing that. Okay, um... You tell her I said thank you? Of course. I appreciate it. She's very, very happy for you. All right, so you're dreaming. So you've done that before. Just this time it's without the flowers, uh, which they used last time, which they didn't have to uh, and probably shouldn't as often. Uh, I, I'm not totally up to speed on how mortal brain development works, but... Um, Probably not excellent, at least for the first 25 years. Um, but I'll see you again soon, okay? Okay, how do I get out of dream? No, um, well, you wake up, but you need a night's sleep, so don't. So I just wait here? Just relax. Don't worry about it. Okay. Relaxing. All right. Good night. Good night. And Wurinwa curls up into a ball and sinks into the floor and yeah. is gone. The night otherwise passes with just more dreams for all three of you. You are awakened with a bountiful Bronthan breakfast. Mm -hmm. The council doesn't have immediate business for you. Uh, they obviously are going to want to talk about some things that are going on and that'll be moving in the future. But uh, you have the morning to yourself. Elnow now will meet you in the room that's been set up to serve all of you. Unless you want your food brought to your room, Garnet, which they will do. Uh, 
Uh, El now is just like sitting in. She's got a whole bunch of like spiced pastries and stuff, and she's just and some some spiced tea, and she's just sitting there. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. That was weird. I thought looks at the spiced pastries. Got it. Hmm. You should have bring something for Cyrus. <laughs> He can probably just cook these. That's not the point. That's not the point. Oh, right. And starts cracking the food. I mean, you could as well, but it would be amazing. I, <laughs> I'll say I made these. Great yeah. idea. Uh, yes. <laughs> hmm. I hope he never challenges this. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'll just bring it. Oh, it's Did you buy fast food and try to pass it off as your own cooking? <laughs> Aurora Borealis manifested this entirely in my room kitchen <laughs> at this time of year. The Aurora Borealis. Oh no! Uh, while clearly being focused on the task at hand, does look at Athalor with a, a critical, not judgy, just a. Uh, I'm a practitioner of magic, and this is a hitherto unknown phenomenon. And she looks at Garnet with concern and warmth. Sort of, a, and then sends you a little message. You okay? Wait, who's this? El now? El now, yeah. She just smiles and drinks her tea. And she mutters out loud. Okay. I didn't trance. What? I couldn't trance? Did you like oh. sleep sleep? I, yeah, I, I I think I, I sleep slept. Slept sleep? Sleep sleeped. Um and went to dream. That's Are you, you like not supposed to be able to do that? Oh, yeah. That's new. Hell now sort of leans over to the side like she's getting a look at your ears, which remain pointy. <laughs> huh. Beery. I'm open to it. Our people experience death differently than others. The other world acts as an additional layer of reconstitution. Our psychic imprint is woven through that filter, and the ambient subconscious does not emanate into dream. It remains physically part of us and physically accessible as an almost genetic memory. It's a little bit more metaphysical than that, but you can think of it that way. If your new body has no biological connection to your previous body or to any other elves, then you would not have that inherent connection. But you'd still have to restore psychic energy somehow, which apparently would be sleep. So you might not have any, in the traditional way of speaking, Athelor, you might not have ancestors. I, that seems like a minefield. How so? Do you do other elf stuff? Makes us only hear that. <laughs> I mean, besides the... What do you mean, elf stuff, Mantra? That's like other... like Elves can't be like... What? The... Uh, Oh, maybe that's still a sleep thing. Charmed, mm -hmm. maybe? It's possible. You're looking very handsome today. My... That's... Mm. Yeah, he knows. Good one. I mean, in terms of a minefield, it's certainly unexplored territory at the lore, which maybe when we're not dealing with 15 different crises we should look right. into that um yeah which, which isn't to denigrate it there's just other thing it's just going to take some time um do you but what do you mean a minefield aside from that 
I well, if you said I don't have ancestors, that mm -hmm. might interfere with the claim to Armderoot. Well, no. Uh, if okay, not that I'm an expert growing up in Hrydor, but your father claimed you when you were an infant, and by your laws, as long as you're claimed outright, you count. Biology or not. Okay. Uh, well, that makes me feel uh, a lot better, providing he doesn't disown me for freeing the sage. So, uh, let's find that one out. Different issue. Entirely. Oh, Dark Vision. Can you see in the dark still? Um, <laughs> it's like bright bronze and morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's a closet like, in this city that isn't the, constantly illuminated. Just no offense, off Garnet. Quick, right? mm. So you haven't felt fine now. Anything? I, as in, like, no. Okay. There are two schools of thought here. Under the first, the opposition has already taken action against us using the information that they had previously. Now that we have eliminated any such information, how long is it going to take for them to realize that? That this isn't just a mind blank and what are they going to do in response? <clears throat> Under that thinking, we should go as fast as possible to prevent the more time there is to interfere, the more interference we can expect to encounter. On the other hand, she looks over at Athlor, we're dealing with something completely new, completely unprecedented. And going in without more information might be a bad idea. So either we do this like now or now adjacent or we give the tower of divination some time just to make sure that there is no further connection and to do as much divination as we can to support i'm going to get untermaler's opinion on this but i want to check in with each of you and hear what you think since your lives are going to be on the line during this as usual I'm ready to go. Great. Athamal opens up his book that he used to essentially use it as a gyre extension when they were doing the ritual. Can he read the markings he made? Yes. I think I still understand this enough. I'm ready whenever. She's going to put like the back of her hand on like Athamal's forehead to like feel his temperature. Do you feel normal? Yeah. And she's going to ask him in Celestial, uh, can you understand me? Uh, Athelol very much looks like he did not understand that. Okay. Okay. Never mind. Okay. Let's run through everything that we need. First, we need to get as close as possible to minimize the threat of any shadow gate nonsense we need mind blank effects i can get that for the four of us but that's it if we're going to go basically now what else did we need we have this dragon who's supposed to help us with the herald the potions. so potion which ones which potions potions of reduction Reduction, right? The shrinking for the okay. sage. Yeah, we we can get all that. We can we can get all that. It's just a question as part of getting there. What else? Um, we could use a, like a scroll of locate object on the lantern. Okay. We have um the dream charms that the sage gave us mm -hmm. as some kind of sympathetic connection to her locator oh, in the shadow okay, good. plane. 
Good. Yeah, sympath sympathetic magic. That's good. Mantra will be able to use um, Red Knob's orb to seemingly scry the sage. Mm -hmm. We yeah. already have that. Maybe it'll be more effective once we're in the shadow walk. I don't know. Yes. Well, no, because the shadow plane is technically another plane of existence. The, the sympathetic magic link should guide those of us who know what we're doing. No offense. In the plane of shadows. Uh, locate objects, scroll, mind blanks, potions of diminution, diminution. And given that we're not trying to pirate anybody out in anybody's knapsacks, do we just need the one for her? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Yourself and Garnet are going to be responsible for exfiltration with the Shadow Walk, right? Mm -hmm. That would be it, yeah. Yes. I wonder if we don't want to go into Andarud, the real Andarud, at all. Could we get away with not doing that? It'll add t complexity to what Garnet and I are doing, but I feel like just walking in there with you right now, Athelor, could trigger an entire, let alone what your uncle is going to do, just what did you do with our kid? And I just prefer to not. Yeah. Passing into the demiplane is going to be complicated, but I'm sure together we can locate it and slip inside. Mm -hmm. Only once we are in there will we be able to locate the object. Yes. Yes. It's, it's an additional layer of complexity. I just think it's worth it. So. We rally together. Maybe, okay, we teleport outside of Andarud. Not to their teleportation circle. We teleport outside of Andarud, physically close. One of us, you or me, Garnet, opens the gate, and we all pass through. Using locate object and the sympathetic link of those connections, and Athelor's knowledge, we find a way inside Andarud, the shadow Andarud somehow, then we find our way to the Shadow Gyre, and we step out. Navigating that, I'm going to be relying a lot on your brain, Athelor. We get to the Sage. You have the scale, right, for Wurrenwa? We get to the yeah. Sage. We invoke Wurrenwa. Wurrenwa takes care of the Herald. We administer the potion and get out through the gate we had already opened. In and out as fast as possible. Once we're back in the shadow world, we worry about exfiltration. Okay? Things might even get easier if we have the sage and she's conscious she could gaze us out. You're right. You're right. It just depends on what sort of state she's in. Okay. We are going home. And then we're going. All right. Uh, Mantra, do you mind if I... um? Glances over to the quill. Oh, it's still, um, yeah, there you go. Okay, does it respond to Athelor still as if it was attuned, or do I need to re attune? You are not attuned to the quill. Oh, okay. I, you I you can take an hour. hour, Elnau can put an hour, one hour on site once you get back home to prepare. So if you need a short rest, you can take it. Okay. Garnet, you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Elno talks to one of the attendants to get all of you escorted to the... Well, no, she doesn't need to do that. She can just teleport out of here. Just do her own teleportation circle. She starts working on it. She just starts inscribing it. She's just going to leave right now from your room. She's carving into the floor. <laughs> no, she has chalk. I guess we'll people for take this. one chalk and help her finish <laughs> the right. other side. She basically just tells them to attend it. We're going. If they need something, we'll do it later. All right. <laughs> the priest king will want to, and they will. Yes, the priest king knows this is urgent. All right. I'll write an apology letter later. We have to go. The attendant bows. A minute later, Elnau activates the spell. A column of light rises up. 
And all you have to do is step through it to go back to the Academy. She's the first one through, and assuming that all of you follow, you are gone by the time that Marison knocks on your door. Oops. Uh-oh. How rude. Back at the Academy, there are a few people who glance over at Athelor, confused as the lot of you move from place to place, but you, the teleportation circle that El now used was a private one. The coordinates of which are hidden. The public terminal for the academy goes directly into the causeway where you can get immediately ganked she didn't go that way she wants all of you back in her office in one hour she immediately leaves to grab potions and scrolls and all the things that you're going to need athor you want to attune to the quill yes did she teleport us into like the headmaster's office no there isn't a teleportation circle there but she did teleport you into the spire okay Athol is going to attune to the quill and then uh, go and wait outside the elemental wellspring room. Okay. Mantra, do you need to do anything? Uh, check in with Swintisco, letting her know what's up and okay. where he's been. And I'll give her a little recap. And <laughs> She's uh, going to want a much longer recap because <laughs> holy crap, that's ridiculous. But yep. uh, But yeah, you know what? That's fine. It, it do be like that. We'll catch up later. Sounds good. And there isn't enough supplies for her to go with you, so she just uh, loves you and wishes you luck. I thank her. I kiss her. I wish her good mm -hmm. goodbye for now. See you soon. For now. Hopefully. Yes. No, hopefully. Yeah. Just yes. Not dying. Right. Yes. Garnet, do you need that hour for anything? <clears throat> nope. Okay. One hour later, you're all gathered in the headmaster's office El now has the staff he's wearing somewhat less uh, obvious clothes she's not dressed up in standard uh, academy gear and she shrugs it probably won't matter but just in case mm-hmm did you need something with the elemental chambers, Athelor? Uh, yes, we should probably fill the quill up, just in case we need an excess of arcane juice. Go ahead. When you get there, the energy in the room is different. Uh, I would say it's, it's almost taxed, like that focusing gem, that Moat of Arakura's eye has been getting used a lot. You don't think it's going to affect what you're doing at all, but it's almost warm to the more warm to the touch than usual, and the the air is wilder in this room. But you can go ahead and fill it up with whatever kind of power you need. Cool. Just grabs like five points of each power. Okay. But keep it balanced between the four pillars. Elno grabs the scroll of teleport, lifts it up in front of her, stops for a moment and looks at Athelor and says, You wouldn't happen to be particularly familiar with any areas outside of the city? Or any circles in the city that are not going to be monitored? Uh, Mother's Workshop? Would that have a circle? Cause we... No, it doesn't have it. Doesn't have a circle. Okay. Uh, no, outside the city where he met Undermola. Is that outside the city? Yeah. I well, no, you met inside the city and you left via magical means. I don't know if you've ever been in the environs of the city. Yeah. Maybe not then. Okay. Well. Shit. <laughs> I thought like almost much like circle of mental blessings, maybe. Yep. Uh, she hands each of you a potion of greater healing. I'd very less. I would very much like to not need this. 
And she reads from the scroll. <laughs> Is this bad? It's not good. Oh, Excellent. Man. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 104. We're finally rescuing the sage. What's the scroll? What is she reading? Teleport. Just a, a scroll of the spell teleport. The last time going? she teleported, all of you got severely hurt. And Why are we teleporting? I thought we were shadow walking. You're going to teleport to outside of because if you shadow walk from here, you're going to have to be, first off, you're going to be in shadow Ioth Academy, which Elna is not particularly keen to go to, just in case. And second, you'd have to travel through the Plane of Shadow all the way from here to Onrood, which is thousands of miles. <clears throat> It'd be accelerated, but like it would still take a really long ass time. So you're going to teleport outside the city, then enter the Plane of Shadows outside the city and find your way in. Okay. Uh, but not before all of you take 25 points of force damage. Oh. Oh god. Force damage. Five. <laughs> and and we're dead. An additional twenty-four for a total of forty-nine. <laughs> I'm at one HP. What is this? I'm what? At zero HP. I'm dead again. <laughs> Also zero. Why are we why are we just dead because of teleport? Because <laughs> the teleport is not going well. Not going spiffingly. Gonna have to mm. wake everyone up. <laughs> okay, no. everyone short rested again. Lost to RNG. Oh, oh, have to shadow no. walk to Andrew? Or wherever that it would be hundreds of miles, like thousands of miles. It's a long walk for the non-void okay. links. So, <laughs> bring out the cards, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> and here they come. Okay, so I need to read. Okay, there is a brief moment of excruciating pain as your molecules do things that your molecules are not supposed to do. Uh, after that, it, it, it's like running fingernails up a chalkboard, except all your bones are the fingernails. Ugh. A moment later, you appear gasping for breath on top of an extremely tall mountain. The air is thin. People do some sliding, some near falls. And uh, El now pukes. Ashes again. What? She gets up and she looks around and just looks at everybody to make sure everyone's alive. Garnet, you do not look good. Yeah, one HP. Okay. Wait, so are we healed or not? I'm confused. Yeah. An you dead. you arrive at like nothing, and now we're gonna do all these things that just happened. Oh, okay. All right, first off, uh, Mantra, you've had very little action this episode. Do you have a coin of fate? Nope. You do now. I'm giving you the oh, coin of fate. Oh, shit. Party, Excellent. you have access to an augury. Please use it before the end of the episode. One of you can heal 2d4 from packing some snacks in advance. Who hears the lowest? Garnet at one? Well, Athlor's at zero. I'm a zero. Also okay. zero. <laughs> okay, so Garnet, the two Garnet, of you are... Garnet's currently our tank. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> our one HP tank. Alright, Garnet, since you're up and snacks can't be administered to the unconscious, go ahead and heal 2d4 plus 2, please. <laughs> okay. Okay. One of our new cards just got played. By the power of bacon. <laughs> All of you, please roll 5d8 plus 8. Oh, man. Athalor, as you were getting strained through reality, as awful as it was, 
you had a strange sort of understanding of it. How the gyre is just a particularly beautifully folded piece of reality, like origami in a way. And the last thing that you were able to do upon arrival was pluck those threads in a slightly different direction. And so moments after you arrive unconscious and your body completely out of whack, a surge of light emanates from you through the others, and all of you heal what you just rolled. That includes oh you, Garnet. Go ahead and heal 5d8 plus 8. Oh. Ooh. Essentially, what Apple had was like, if you're in a car crash, you're like, oh, his license plate says no, but... <laughs> <laughs> you, get your, like, you get your little lucid moment before absolute peril. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Garnet, I'm you may have an... consciousness. Let's see. No. All of you also gain. Oh, man, they're just coming in hot and fast. <laughs> After, is anyone still hurt? El now is going to walk around and check with yeah. everyone to see if they're still hurt. How yeah. bad are you? 28 out of 35. Oh, so you have seven, you're down seven? Yeah, down seven. I'm Garnet. down 10. You're down I'm 10? Down four. All right, you can drink those potions if you want them. How that much are they? Uh, 44 plus four. Regular is 24 uh, plus two, right? I've got one of those. Just... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nah, yeah. Sure. Let's, let's do a little, little potion. Okay. There's my potion of healing. Get it out of there. Elna takes a couple of moments to regain her breath. Andrew is nowhere to be seen. Where are we? Where do we end up? What environment are we in? Mountains. Is that congruous with where Underwood would be close to? Yeah, I mean, Underwood is definitely in a mountainous region. Uh, some are really high snow-capped peaks, others are more like foresty alpine, and you're on one of the really tall ones. It's summer, so it's not that cold, but... You're a few miles above sea level, so the air is thin and it definitely is cold. Okay, this seems like an issue. A little bit. <clears throat> oh, why do I even try this? Okay, we need some way of figuring out if we're even in the right continent. Can we use an augury? Sounds good. Wheel or woe? Are we on this continent? Both? <laughs> Wheel or woe if we shadow walk now to reach Onderud. Good idea. Okay. Yeah. The answer is wheel and woe. Okay. So like, yes, but it'll take a long time because we're really far. If it had just or, said whoa, we would be in the shadow world for who knows how long. I'd rather navigate there than here. And just yeah. trust that we're in the vicinity. That place is more ephemeral than this. Garnet and I should be able to try to find our way there. Okay. El now looks at you. Should I take this one? I don't think you should take anything ever after that. Okay. It's one specific spell. My bones hurt. Yes. So do mine, and mine are hollow. It's one specific spell that I am willing to let somebody else do next time, but it does not there's not enough data to suggest that I'm just bad at everything, Garnet. I'm just not good at teleporting. It's just, just unlucky. It's just, you know, you'll get it next time. 
There won't be a next time. I'm not teleporting with her ever again. Um, so you want to shadow walk now? Yes. I just... We're here in the mortal world. No idea where we are. Can't just walk from here. I can try to fly up and get a better view, but it could still be hundreds of miles. We can go What's much faster. Speed? I think it's just 30. Yeah, I have a horse, but probably can only take one of us. That's why we should just shift now. It's not, she looks at the results of the augury. It's not going to be that bad. We must be fairly close, and you and I will be able to navigate much better there than here. The mountains you don't will even know what direction to go. But How would shadow walking now be a good idea? Because it'll go a hell of a lot faster. Okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> it's going to take her 10 minutes to cast the ritual. Uh... You're not quite here long enough in the cold to have to roll a saving throw against Frostbite, but it is very cold. I'll just put it that way. Like mold some earth for a little like uh, blocking uh, <laughs> dirt yeah. kind of wall or something mm -hmm. against the wind. Okay. I need all three of you to please roll 1d20. Oh. Five, yeah. thirteen, uh -oh. and four. Congratulations, Mason. You have at least made. Uh, Garnet. <laughs> uh oh. L low roll. Garnet. I have an offer for you. Not me. I'm I'm an impartial observer knows. here. Uh, the serpent has an offer for you. Oh, I want to have the banker me. from Dealer No Deal. <laughs> <laughs> I want it with a shitty deal. Here's your first choice. You will gain supernatural knowledge that will grant you plus 1d8 on a knowledge check of your choice arcana, religion, history, etc. But whatever you will learn, you learn, Zethius will also learn. No. Already know. Okay, great. You want option number two? What's option two? Uh, <laughs> if you meet an enemy this episode, they will have advantage on their attacks against you because they will be Zethius. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Let's drag us out for another 24 minutes, y'all. Let's <laughs> yeah. figure oh, out the way kick. there. There's a kicker effect. I forgot to, I didn't finish. If this doesn't go off by the end of the episode, Zethius will reveal a useful secret to one of your enemies it won't okay it won't necessarily Athlor, be like all your secrets throw a punch at Athlor. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. he's not no. my enemy <laughs> no no <laughs> doesn't count <laughs> I, I i'm i'm brand new i i'm i'm neutral she can make me an enemy <laughs> <laughs> okay i'll one i'll take the one da as i wonder how to cook a bronthan pastry <laughs> Roll a history check. Plus no, 1d8. Nice <laughs> <laughs> don't cook He's learning this is terrible baking. Salt, sugar, I can't tell the difference. <laughs> How much do I it's, bitch, can't cook for shit. <laughs> no, Cyrus is pastry. All right, so much for that. <laughs> I don't okay. want to help Zethia. This is a horrible thing to give me. <laughs> Just the, the dice fell where the dice fell. That's all. Okay. So I don't know how to cook pastries. Correct. You absolutely Damn. don't remember how to do that. Damn. Damn. Unlucky. The, the, the B plot is significantly hampered. Mm hmm. Alas. After 10 minutes, Elle now raises her hands to either side. Her pupils swell, becoming pools of darkness, of shadow, to fill her eyes entirely. She doesn't speak void tongue. She's not using the void language. This is a spell of shadow, What the paradox, what lies between either side. 
And as she pulls her hands apart, your own shadows flow along the ground and coalesce and flow upwards into this floating, a shadow of a thing that doesn't even exist. A gateway to the in-between realms of shadow. She's holding the gate open and she says, Garnet, lead the way. Marches in. Okay. Walking through is like walking through an ice cold waterfall. And on the other side is a landscape of exaggerated mountains. Gen angling up at bizarre angles. It's very Tim Burton. There's absolutely no hues of color anywhere. Just different shades of gray and stark contrasts of black and white. You know, in a way, it reminds you of the silent city. But nonetheless, once all of you step through, El now follows and shuts her hands and the pool of shadow, which here is a blinding spot of light as it leads back to the real world, closes behind you. This place is less real than where we just were it's not like dream where your mind alone can shape it but it is responsive it will shift so let's all focus on you know what athalor yes focus on home and let's get going Under disturbance, I'm sure that whatever ripples Vajaya makes will show up quite loudly here where things are mostly mm -hmm. still. As all of you begin the long path, I would like you each to roll a survival check, please. Ooh. I don't think we've ever had to roll that. Oh, oh no. no! It's a good Living thing. Out. It's a good thing you I haven't had to roll dice. that. Okay. Oh. I will try not to tank this party too you know hard. What? I'll also use one of my inspirations. Okay. Good, I have good. a lot of them. Me trying to remember where S is in the alphabet. Leader of the pack, baby. Okay. That's much better. It's a good thing that they put you in charge. I just need to see what the hell the headmaster's score is in this. Uh, Jack and also shit. Oh, man. Yeah, uh -oh. doesn't doesn't know anything. Moving through here is, I hesitate to say dreamlike because we already have an entire plane like that. Um, but it, the things shift in the distance. You look at the horizon, and you see the weird, craggy shaped mountains silhouetted in the distance, and the next time you look, they've moved. And it's extremely steep up and downs because, again, it's it's like a, a bizarre, twisted version of reality. And things keep changing. And as you move through it, it things blur. Your movement here is accelerated effectively, even though it doesn't feel like it compared to the real world. You're going 50 miles an hour. I was zooming. Mm-hmm. Now, where's the notes I made for this when we were going to do this like 50 years ago? Rolling a d20, don't mind me. What's everyone's passive perception out of pure curiosity? Uh, 16, 14, 12. Okay. Cool. Don't worry about it. After six hours of traipsing through this bizarre landscape, Athelor, you feel like a twitch in the back of your eye, almost. And up ahead, you see it before anyone else does. Their eyes, when they try to look at it, just sort of glide across and, and move away. But yours, when you look at it, you see the mountains sort of 
bending around themselves and tying themselves into a knot. There are way stations down below. You've, you've always known that Andrude has access points to the mortal world, deliberately so, so they can conduct trade. And around the tangled knot of mountains, you see buildings, ramshackle, broken down, almost like a toll house that just juts up right next to it. And you see things moving down there, shapes shuffling around, wearing heavy coats. But that's where Onderud is. And once Athlor points it out, everyone can see it. We've arrived. Okay. Athlor, the shadow of a place that's familiar can be disconcerting. I just want to prepare you for that. In what way? It's an exaggerated, twisted version of what actually is. And when the things being exaggerated and twisted are things that mean a lot to you, um, it can just make things worse. Let's go introduce ourselves to the locals. And Elnau is going to lead the way. Should I use this map? Maybe I'll use this map. It's not fully prepared, so just treat this as a uh, preview. More of a more of a visual aid than anything else. How about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a visual aid in which you can see nothing. I'm immersed. It, it, it's perfect, DM. Yeah. Hold on. Wrong out. Oh, no, oh. <clears throat> Up ahead are the enormous spiked gates of the city. In a what should be this big, proud structure that would uh with a huge gate that would open to allow travelers and traders in and out of the city, those who don't travel via magic. Instead, there's a spiked portcullis guarded by figures whose knees are backwards and who hide their faces beneath cloaks and hoods. Elna will go unless you want to take point. Oh, she's got this diplomacy. We need passage into the city. What's you playing with? This is, is our gate. No one comes through for free. She taps Ioth's staff on the ground twice, and a fireball shoots straight up to the maximum distance and bursts. And the cloaked figures hide and uh, shriek at the touch of the light. We need passage into the city. They hiss and curse, but they move aside. And the doors open, and beyond the passageway twists and turns upside down on itself, but it does in fact lead into a shadowy version of Onderud. Here, instead of the beautiful skyless city with the foundries and workshops down at the street level and the elegant towers and the, the gyre chamber at its center, the ceiling, the, the city half above you is tilted like it's about to fall down. And some of the buildings, gravity should work the same in either direction. Each should have its own gravity, but it looks like the buildings are hanging by chains or like broken and dangling by a thread. And the central structure is crooked and off center. There are shapes 
moving through the city as well. And the bustling streets that should be filled with forges and places where the artificers do their work are either silent or just filled with creaking and crunching noises. This isn't right. It's only somewhat real. Don't worry about it. Garnet, please roll a perception check for me. 25. Hey, that's our girl. She's got hey. the eyes. Can't cook, but I can see. <laughs> <laughs> I can see, but I fucked myself. <laughs> the journey could be full of peril be full of lurking daggers and shadows seeking to drain the very vital energy, the life from your bodies. But with the most powerful shadow mage and uh, Garnet, don't worry, someday, <laughs> navigating your way, you're able to climb up the decrepit, broken down spy, well, yeah, towers that lead to the central chamber. Um the palace of your birth and its galleries that overlook everything. Some of them are, are dangling at such a dangerous angle that you have to use magic or flight or just swing on a rope in order to make your way there. But let us say that over the course of several more hours, it has now been eight hours since you left. But you finally arrive. In a dark and twisted version of a once familiar place. This is the balcony that should be the place where visitors arrive via the teleportation circle. But there are shapes moving all around you. The gyre chamber lies ahead but the way to it is blocked i'm just going to put you all on the map here shadows surround you on well they confront you on all side you might be having difficulty actually seeing them on your screen they are let me just go ahead and summon you here here and 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 here. El now pauses. Garnet knows well how dangerous these things can be. They were your secret weapon to a certain degree in the Clash of the Codex. Their mere touch can drain your strength into nothingness. An individual shadow may not be a severe threat, but there are a lot of them. Before the Archmage just Archmages all over the place, what would everyone like to do? What are everyone's thoughts on bypassing this challenge? Uh, Garnet will suggest that she probably knows all the weaknesses around these guys mm -hmm. and that um, they can hide in the shadows, so we definitely don't want to stay in that. So she'll offer... If Elna doesn't have, like, if the Staff of Iot doesn't have a big source of light, she has a spell that can bring a lot of light. Okay. Which one? Um, this one can raise ah, okay. the light of an area. Yeah, shutters and clouds. Yeah, you can do that. So, that but might... if she doesn't have a bright enough light, that could work. Or I'm just looking at the staff of the Magi. Light sources. And if that's centered on Garnet and moves with you. Um, they're immune to necrotic and poison. They're vulnerable to radiant damage. Resistant to pretty much anything magical. Um... So that, that spell raises like the ambient light. Is mm -hmm. it like does Mantra has a thing where it can create bright light from the charged runes and his horns? Can that like amplify that light? It would definitely help if all of you are glowing. 
the the staff can do the basic light spell at will which is what she's likely to do here since it doesn't burn resources at the lord anything we could go up and over avoid them using a rainbow bridge true true let's take a look at the map here real quick because this is a huge chamber and a lot of it is empty yeah so if you scroll up you're on a large platform above this lower area and there are many shadows here as well and beyond that there's a big gap in the floor yeah there's just emptiness when you get up to this point past this balcony there's one staircase in the real world there's two staircases that lead two ramps that lead down but this one here seems to be gone and shattered okay if the if we can keep the shadows at bay with light i can use a single rainbow bridge to get us down to the next level how far how far will that take us 30 feet but i can cast it from the quill and go even further I can go to 120, 150 feet. Okay, that could let us clear that last gap if we just stick together with the light that we all generate and just make it to there without incident. Hopefully we should be fine. Um, they're extremely unintelligent and not and really weak. So I can, I mean, mechanically strength checks will be good against them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can use Twilight Tendrils to just push them away if they get close. Okay. So it'll be a strength check. Mm -hmm. If we have anything that tests intelligence, we can try that. Light should be enough, but it's only it only gives them disadvantage in the light. So it's like it's they just can convincing, act, right? They can still act in the light. It's just they'll be much weaker. Mm -hmm. Um. Camera broke. Uh, bless the dark. He's already descended into the darkness. <laughs> After I use the second bridge, we still have to deal with two platforms. That's why I'm wondering if we just try to <clears throat> bully our way to the balcony and then go from there with the bridge. True. I could go from the balcony all the way to the gyre. It would be one heck of a cast. It's worth it. Okay. Light. Spit and vinegar. Give him, just let them know who's in charge. We'll see if that'll work. If they get close to us, Garnet, you do that. I'll do my own thing. We each of us. Focus your shots on one target at a time. Get rid of them. The closer they are to us, the more danger they are. M Mason, do you have anything for the undead? For the undead? Yes. I don't believe so. Okay. She taps the staff of Ioth on the ground, invoking the light spell. It sputters. She frowns at it. The light eventually bursts forth, but it seems dimmed. Like it's struggling even to defy the darkness of this place. Garnet, are you casting your spell? Um, am I sensing that this is magical darkness that's in this area then? No, this is just a property of the Plane of Shadows. It doesn't like light magic. It's not that it's completely disabling it, but if you want to cast spells that involve light, you have to succeed on an Arcana check or it doesn't even work. And oftentimes their effects are reduced. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll cast my spell on her light thing. Okay. Roll an Arcana check, please. A 13. It struggles. It, it feels like you have to pour more power into it than normal. No mechanical effect, but you are able to elevate that light. Mason, are you flaring up your horns? 
Yeah, had to use some points of uh, some sorcery points, mm -hmm. make runes out of them, and after a few seconds, they will charge up and just emit uh, bright light from Hunter's Horns. It is five foot radius of bright light, an additional five of dim light. Mm -hmm. It's like half of that. It's just barely enough to cover you. Mm -hmm. Which that means that... 45 feet from my thing, mm -hmm. radius. Yeah, all those are, are cut down. That aura of protective radiance that you were hoping for is not nearly as strong as you'd hoped. I would now like each of you to roll an intimidation check to convince these things that your shadows cast further than theirs. 23. Uh, can I use some celestial magic and cast Bright Bow Rune? I mean, it has Bright Bow in the name and just yeah. kind of like be sending out arrows kind of like into the sky and they're, yeah. I would assume, bright in nature as like a mm -hmm. advantage on this. Some warning shots. Let's yeah. see if these shadows can dance. Uh, would that give me an advantage on this? Yeah. I'll allow that. Oh, 22. 22. Okay. Creeping forward, bit by bit. As you move, they draw closer to you, hovering like at the edge of the aura of light. But at Garnet's cold stare and the shadows emanating from her, the power that she possesses in this place, the newborn Athalor's sort of eerie luminescence, the bolts of celestial light being fired off by Mantra, and the don't fuck with me of El now. You're able to cautiously make your way. Now, El now is going to suggest that you just walk all the way to that balcony. Is that okay, Athalor? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm not moving all my action figures right now. Just go ahead and as you're moving, they're gathering around you, but staying at a distance. A gap in the floor leads down to apparently nothing. Um, you reach the edge. A shadowy, cloudy void where the city should be drops out beneath you. And then, an unexpected sound cuts through the eerie silence of the chamber. A shriek, a series of shrieks, and the flapping of wings. Clouds of ravens, crows, Lit out from around, not from within, but from around the edges of the of the gyre chamber, and from the darkness, from the shadows, they rise up, pooling and coalescing into a humanoid form, a woman of striking, terrible beauty with enormous curling dark horns. Are they hers? Are they a headdress? A dress with crow feathers all throughout it. A cruel smile on her lips and a staff of polished ebony in her hand. Bars your way. We'll find out who she is on the next episode of Book of Dawn, I Have Academy. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, does anyone need to skip detention? Okay. All right, Mr. Across the Pond. We will see all of you <laughs> shortly.